So for me, that's my next mission, you know, and that's a big mission. Like imagine if my daughter does make it to NASCAR, which she's already signed up with Toyota and they're saying in three years, she's gonna be in a Kyle Busch truck. Like that's a done deal. This is going to be fun. The Haley Deegan hype is at an all-time high right now after yesterday's announcement that Haley Deegan will be driving for Ford in 2020. Lots of speculation about her future plans were going around, but now that her plans are set in stone, we can take a look back on her 2019 season and explore 2020 and beyond. First things first, let's take a look at her second season in the then-called K&N West series. The last time we did a video on her, it was around mid-season and she was sitting a solid second in the standings right behind her teammate Derek Krause. At this point, she had two wins underneath her belt and was looking like one of the championship favorites. However, it wouldn't play out exactly as planned. Part of the problem being that some of her competition absolutely despises her driving style. Because of her racing background, she's naturally going to be a little bit more aggressive, but eventually her competition started to take notice of this and dish it back to her. In the long run, it didn't help her out at all and it just made her life a whole lot more difficult than it needed to be on track. This led to a stretch of inconsistent runs in the middle of the season. Towards the end of 2019, however, she would show off her true potential. A second at Roseville, a third at Bakersfield, and a fourth place finish at ISM to close out the season is mighty impressive. Despite these impressive runs, it wasn't enough to win the championship as she would lose to Derek Krause. Her 2019 K&N West stats are this. Two wins, eight top fives, 11 top tens, and an average finish of 6.1 in 14 starts and also led 67 laps throughout the season. Good season all around in the K&N West series, but the K&N East is a much different story. For some odd reason, not a whole lot of people want to talk about her performances in the East series races, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because they don't want to address that, hey, she's struggling here too, but I think that has more to do with the caliber of competition. The K&N East is a totally different beast than the West series. She straight up struggled in this series. In eight starts, she only had three top tens along with three DNFs and an average finish of 11.9. Her abilities are still being developed against higher caliber competition. But on a positive note, she was able to get sponsorship during this time. IK9 decided to go all in with her during the 2019 season and I mean I have to admit these paint schemes look pretty damn cool. The Arca series wasn't necessarily much of a fruitful experience. Driving six races for Venturini Motorsports, her best finish was a fifth at IRP. Outside of that, she couldn't find much luck. In her debut at Toledo, she finished 18th and DNF'd because for some reason Joe Graff Jr. just had to cut down on her. At Pocono, she finished 7th, yes, but 2 laps off the pace. She couldn't find her footing in the beginning of the season, but come the end of 2019, she was able to improve. Low key, I was impressed with her season finale run at Kansas. She had to go to the rear starting 22nd and was able to mount an 8th place finish on the lead lap. Yes, I know it's Arca. Yes, I know there's only 22 cars, like, oh, she should have finished higher. At the end of the day, she was able to keep her car out of trouble and bring it home in one piece. And that's the point. That is exactly what she's supposed to be doing. She's not supposed to be tearing up the cars. She's supposed to be getting much needed track time to gain experience on these ovals. I'd say she did a pretty damn good job in the k and West series, but as far as the East and Arca go, I'd say it was more so decent. Now that 2019 is out of the way, let's get into 2020. At first, we had no idea what was going on. Even Haley Deegan, when she appeared on the NASCAR Weekly podcast, didn't even know yet. Then we started hearing rumblings about a potential manufacturer switch from Toyota to Ford. Honestly, it wasn't really surprising to me because Toyota has so many development drivers in the pipeline, but not enough rides. Ford, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have very many prospects at the moment, so landing Haley Deegan was the perfect opportunity opportunity to vamp their program up. In 2020, you'll be seeing Haley Deegan drive full-time in the Arca Menard series, plus a few select sports car events in a Mustang GT4 in IMSA. That is crazy to me. So Ford is basically going all out with this, like, hey, we're basically going to try and develop your skill sets on these certain tracks, not just ovals, but also road courses. The groundwork for progression has officially been laid out, and only time will tell if it'll pay off. 
I feel like if Haley Deegan and her family stick to the plan with Ford, she can flourish into a potential superstar that the sport hasn't seen in quite a while. Haley Deegan is NASCAR's meal ticket back into the mainstream. Already inside the top 10 when it comes to social media presence within the sport, her success on the track will equal a ton of publicity and money for both parties. She already knows how much pressure she has under, and that's bound to increase as the season goes on. Anyways, that'll do it for another video. Good luck to Haley Deegan on her 2020 season. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.